So I want you to sit down because this is going to shock you. Congressman Adam Schiff says he hates to even think about it, but we might have to impeach President Trump over the Ukraine phone call. He says, I really didn't want to have to do this, but it might be the only thing we can do. He's so restrained. Why doesn't the president just say release the whistleblower complaint? Clearly, he's afraid for the public to see uh, either one of those things. Uh, and we're determined to make sure that the public does, that the nation is protected, that okay. if the president of the United States is browbeating a foreign leader, uh, at the same time he was withholding a vital military assistance that Ukraine needed to defend itself against uh, Russia, uh, and trying to get dirt on his political opponent, and yet a second campaign, then the country needs to know about it. Oh, we need where to do we defense. begin? Where do we begin? Well, for one thing, let's start with this. You've been hearing the word whistleblower now for days, but there really is no whistleblower because it's now come out that, and, and both CNN and the New York Times have been forced to admit this deep within their coverage. They're not headlining it. It's now come out that the so-called source didn't actually hear this. He or she only heard about it. So you can't be a whistleblower if what you've got is hearsay. A whistleblower is someone who witnesses official wrongdoing and blows the whistle on it. Having heard something about something that was said does not make you a whistleblower. And in fact, these calls that the president, when he makes these calls, there's 20 people on these calls. There's people on our end, there's people on the other end. Of all presidents, you don't really think that Donald Trump ever says anything in an official phone call that we would not immediately get leaked out to us if it was inappropriate, illegal, for his emolument. I mean, the way this deep state works, the way this uh, government is so riddled with Never Trump, pro Obama, Obama holdover people. There's absolutely no way. The more I thought about this over the weekend, I thought he couldn't. He he couldn't do even if he wanted to do what they're accusing him of doing. He couldn't get away from it. So there is no whistleblower. If you're talking about withholding money to pressure the actions of a foreign government. This is a Biden scandal, not a Trump scandal. Trump gave them the money. This foreign aid, and remember, this is from a president who came into office saying, I question all foreign aid. I'm I'm rethinking all of the foreign aid and loan guarantees and everything we do. We've, We've known this about Trump since 2015, but if you want to talk about actually withholding money in a quid pro quo way, here's Joe Biden. I want to play that clip, Don. Here's Joe Biden. He's on stage during a a town hall event in 2018, last year, so before he became a president, but after he left the vice presidency. And he's telling an old war story about his dealings as vice president with Ukraine. Listen to this. I, I, I was, not I, I, but it just happened to be that was the assignment I got. I, I, I got all the good ones. Uh, uh, and uh, so I got Ukraine. And uh, um, I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev. And, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to the press conference. Said, "No, nah, I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. So th- this is Biden telling a story of how he made them fire a judicial prosecutor or he wasn't going to sign over on a $1.2 billion loan guarantee that he had been sent over by the Obama administration to do. So all of you people that are, oh my God, Trump's in trouble, and they might have him this time, I'm so worried, I got all these emails over the weekend. 
Um, this is going to be a Biden scandal. Devin Nunez even said this. He was on Fox's, uh, the Fox Business Network, Maria Bartiromo show, and he said, look, by the time this all settles down, the guy that might have some answering to do is Joe Biden based on Hunter Biden's involvement. And really quickly, I don't want to get into all the details, Hunter Biden, Joe Biden's surviving son, uh, is on the board of a company called Burisma, which is an energy company in Ukraine. He gets on the board, and then all of a sudden his dad is the, um, is the uh, U.S. government's point man for Ukraine. You heard uh, Biden say it in that clip we just played, they gave me Ukraine. So now there's, an independent, there's a uh, judicial prosecutor in Ukraine investigating Burisma, and Biden is bragging about how he got him fired lest they would lose their loan guarantee. Here's Devin Nunez with Fox Business Network. These stories first originated, first originated back when Hillary Clinton was trying to make sure that Biden didn't get in the race. So I now that these have been resurrected, I, I don't know who came up with the scheme. Maybe there really is this whistleblower yeah. is not a partisan. I mean, we want, to, we want to hear from that whistleblower. But it sure looks like the scheme has backfired. And this, like I said, I think this is probably the end of Biden's you just, campaign. You, you, end of his campaign. I, I really do. I don't think, I mean, I, not that he's, he's still formidable. He still has a, a block of support. Yeah. But if you look, his, his lead is basically down to zero. If you look what happened in, in Iowa now, uh, it looks like Elizabeth Warren is in the lead. So I don't know if Devin Nunez is right about that. He may be jumping the gun a little, but this is what Biden has been suspected of for years. Hillary Clinton thought she had him on it. Trump has been talking about it since before he, uh, since before Biden became a candidate. Um, and in fact, remember Ukraine and all the corruption there figured very prominently in the Paul Manafort. Uh, case as well. So there is a body of thought, and I'm not ready to go there yet, but there is a body of thought that maybe this whole thing, although it looks like a Trump takedown, is really a Biden takedown by Democrats and deep staters who want Biden out of the way, you know, cleared the, cleared off the deck of the 2020 uh, contenders. And as you heard Devin Nunez say, Uh, The poll numbers are starting to do that to Joe all by himself. Uh, Vice President Biden, when he was handling Ukraine for the Obama administration, they give vice presidents, you know, things to do, portfolios of responsibility, and Ukraine was in his. Um, And maybe that was pure luck or chance, or maybe it wasn't, because it happens that his son Hunter had business dealings and sat on the board of directors of a large Ukrainian energy company. But in any event... Um, Joe Biden, by his own braggadocio, uh, threatened the government of Ukraine and got them to fire uh, a prosecutor who was investigating the corruption in Hunter Biden's company. Not that it was his company, but the company on whose board he sat. Ukraine was on its way to going after this company called Burisma. And Biden says, now he could, be, he could be lying too, but he says, I stopped him from doing it. I told him they wouldn't get the loan guarantee uh, if they didn't fire this uh, prosecutor. And they fired him before I got on the plane and flew out of there. So that's what Donald Trump has been saying ought to be investigated. And that is what he apparently brought up in the conversation he had with the new Ukrainian president. Biden did what they would like to have me do, except for one problem. I didn't do it. What Biden did is a disgrace. What his son did is a disgrace. The son took money from Ukraine. The son took money from China, a lot of money from China. China would love to see. He would. They could think of nothing they'd rather see than Biden get in, because they will take this great deal that we're about to make, and they would really have themselves a, a deal for themselves. Well, let me just tell you, let me just tell you. What Biden did was wrong. Uh, Bill Weld, the former governor of Massachusetts, who's now running uh, or trying to primary President Trump, uh, said in an interview on MSNBC this morning that what President Trump did is um, treacherous and should be the sentence should be death. And what's scary about this? Um, is that Bill Weld is not only crazy, 
But Bill Weld was an assistant United States Attorney General and a U.S. Attorney. He headed the Criminal Justice Division at the Justice Department. I think it was under Bush 41. So he's either losing his mind or he has Trump derangement syndrome to be floating the death penalty for treason or treachery. Which, by the way, it's not the only penalty for treachery. Um, so what's happening here might not... I, I don't think we're, we're anywhere near the end of this story, but this might wind up being a Joe Biden story, not a Donald Trump story. And that's kind of, in a nutshell, where I'm at on it. And again, it can change, and it may change. 210-599-5555. Brad is on 550 and 1071 KTSA. Brad, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Jack. You know, two things. First off, if he had family or anybody connected with any kind of a, a, a business venture, a business venture there in the Ukraine, then that is what we call a conflict of interest. And you would generally say, "I'm going to have to recuse myself of this, or I'll take any assignment but Ukraine because my son has a corporate, uh, you know, thing going on there." So the, that's the one red flag. Uh, secondly, you know, I get the impression that Joe was trying to impress somebody. Hey. Man, I'm a tough guy. I sit down with these foreign overseas guys, and I lay down the Yeah, that was definitely I, going on. That, that, yeah. that, that's true. And he may have grossly look. exaggerated what he was actually able to accomplish there. That's true. But he's, now, are, but, but he's saying, I did the thing that he is now saying I think Trump did. Yeah, and what, how do you think the other Democratic nominees are going to tap dance around this? Or are they just going to pull out the daggers and you know, plunge them right in? No, they're going to defend Joe Biden publicly, but privately, some people think this is a way to take him down. And and, and frankly, I've been waiting for a long time. Hunter Biden uh, is a is a hand grenade waiting to go off in the Biden campaign. He has questionable dealings in China, Ukraine. He has questionable personal life. Uh, He had some kind of weird deal with the widow of his brother. Uh, And um, I don't know. I I I have the feeling that he's going to be trouble eventually for. Uh, Vice President Biden. But we'll see. I mean, I think we're very early here. I just want you to know that this is not, despite the way it's being presented to you as chapter 2035 of the Get Trump uh, book, this is really not a Trump scandal. It looks to me like what's happening with this Ukraine story, and and I I never try to tell you what to think. I'm just going to throw this out there. I think there is a kind of panic going on around the candidacy of Joe Biden for president. I I think that Democrats are in a love-hate position with the guy. They sometimes think he's their guy, he can beat Trump, and then other times they think, oh man, no, he can't. He can't even, we're not even sure he can do this job. We're not even sure he can make it to November of 2020. So there's that concern. Now, the Ukraine thing has been lurking in the background of Joe Biden's political life for many years. I mean, you can go back to 2012 when Joe Biden was the vice president under Barack Obama and their ticket was running for re-election, a re-election that was not a sure thing. Remember, in 2012, at times, it looked like Mitt Romney was your next president. So... The, the Ukraine stuff started to bubble under the surface. And Hunter Biden's dealings, not only in Ukraine, but in China and elsewhere, were thought to be a real vulnerability for Joe Biden. Then it's uh, 2015, getting to be 2016, and Hillary Clinton wants a clear path to the Democratic nomination. She's waited and waited and waited, and it's her turn and ready for Hillary, and I'm with her and all that stuff, remember? And there's there's rumblings about, well, maybe Vice President Biden will run. And that's very inconvenient for Hillary. She already has to deal with this Bernie Sanders character. She doesn't doesn't want Biden in there, too. And so the Ukraine thing is, again, very much talked about, and this time even... Donald Trump, candidate Donald Trump, is talking about it. And so now here we are, and you're hearing about it as if this is a Trump scandal. You're hearing there's a whistleblower, which there isn't, 
because this person apparently, according to the CNN and the New York Times, did not even hear the call. They were not even on the call. I mean, there might have been two dozen people on that call, but this person wasn't one of them. They're claiming they heard about what the president said to Ukraine. But think about this now. With all the leaks that come out of the Trump White House, why isn't there anyone else confirming or corroborating what this person has said? I'm not going to call them a whistleblower because they're not one. This is the leakiest White House ever. This is the most, this is the president with the greatest number of disloyal, turncoat, hope to see him trip and fall people around him we've ever had perhaps in our history, maybe ever, certainly in modern history. But no one is saying, oh yeah, he did say that, I was on the call. And in the meantime, when you strip away the misdirection, Trump did something, Trump is guilty, collusion part two, what you're left with is the embarrassing possibility of people learning more about Joe Biden and his family. And for the Democrats, this could work one of two ways. This could be a nightmare for them, or this could be a blessing for them. This could be the way they move past Joe Biden. This is, Devin Nunez even said uh, over the weekend, I think this could be the end, the eventual end of Biden's candidacy. He pointed out that you have growing concern about the Ukraine connection, combined with the fact that in many polls, Joe Biden is now in second place in Iowa. And if he doesn't win Iowa, what is the argument for Joe Biden as the front runner and the most electable Democrat? I mean, if Elizabeth Warren beats him in Iowa and or New Hampshire, why do we need Joe Biden? This is what Nunez said over the weekend on Fox Business Network. These stories first originated, first originated back when Hillary Clinton was trying to make sure that Biden didn't get in the race. So now that these have been resurrected, I I don't know who came up with the scheme. Maybe there really is this whistleblower is not a partisan. I mean, we want to we want to hear from that whistleblower. But it sure looks like the scheme is backfired. And this, like I said, I think this is probably the end of Biden's campaign. End of his campaign. I I really do. I don't think I mean, not that he's he's still formidable. He still has a, a block of support. Yeah. But if you look, his his lead is basically down to zero. If you look what happened in in Iowa now, uh, it looks like Elizabeth Warren is in the lead. And Dan Bongino was saying this morning that uh, he thinks this is the Empire Strikes Back sequel to the Star Wars collusion hoax. And uh, he was also talking, as many other people have, about the fact that um, you were first told about this phone call as if um, a person heard it, overheard it, When the President of the United States, this President, any President, makes these calls, there are people on his team dialed in, punched in to the call, and there are people ostensibly on the other end in that other country also listening in. There has to be a translator, there has to be people giving advice, whispering, writing, scribbling notes. So the whistleblower, who who now, it turns out, is not even one of those people, is saying something that the people who were on the call, at least to this moment, have not corroborated. So we don't know who it is, but we now have a little less confidence that they know what they're talking about. And in the meantime, I would just say, you're going to hear what you're going to hear, but read between the lines, because this may wind up being Biden's scandal. And um, you also have to remember, this is not new for him. This is an old, old narrative that has followed Joe Biden around for years and years. And this son of his has done him no favors. I, I, I imagine the father has probably helped the son way more than the son has helped the father. 